Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special Easter edition of the KFC Supercoach AFL podcast. I'm Al Payton. Joining me, uh, Dan Batten. We've got uh, Tim Mitchell isn't out this week. He's uh, flying to Queensland, I believe. So I think we'll find out if they have Wi-Fi on the flights. Keep an eye on Twitter and um, how many trades and (laughs) screenshots Tim's posting. We'll know what what he's up to. But um, he's not going to be able to join us today. But um, Dan is here. We'll get to um, uh, what happened on the weekend and my sort of uh, mediocre team uh, shortly. But I think the question everybody wants to know, Dan, is how are you recovering from the Amati party? Yeah, it was a big one. So big that I've actually uh, caught the spicy cough, Al. Um, but uh, it, it was a real fizzer. You know, everyone sick um, uh, stemming from that. But, yeah, he uh, absolutely stunk it up. He was looking okay early. He was on about 15 points uh, at quarter time, 16 points or so. Had about three touches um, from there on. Was was off uh, at the end as well uh, when all the action was happening and um funny story friend of the show clinton young i ran into him uh late in the week and i was sort of uh, you know whether i get a marty and what was that sorry former hawk and collingwood player was he that's right that's right yeah Yeah, a you know big name uh player in the sort of late 2000s uh early 2010s and yeah he um obviously listens to the show and actually bumped into him and he had was listening to the show at that very point in time and he, <laughs> he said it's meant to be we're gonna we're gonna jump on a marty so we both did it together um and yeah look, look what it's brought us so uh <laughs> there's, there's a lesson there's a lesson in there somewhere so um yeah but uh i guess my my score i mean that wasn't even the worst of my round at 4 30 uh, I saw on Twitter, Mitch Cleary had tweeted that Jared Witts was a possible late out. And I thought, oh, okay, all good. I'll just wait, um, see if he's out, maybe trade in English, then realise about 10 seconds later that English was playing in five minutes. <laughs> so uh, I, was, I was on uh, the way to, to a mate's house uh, in the car, tossing and turning, like, oh, do, do I get English? At one point I traded him in, I think with about three minutes to go. Then I realized, oh, I could just get Samson Ryan at R3 um, and then see how he goes and potentially play him because, I don't know, which well, wasn't a confirmed out at that stage. But, yeah, obviously reversed uh, English and watching that game, he was on about 70 halfway through the second quarter and that was a nightmare. So I just thought, you know what, I'm going to trade Wits to, to Grundy because at that point I was looking like about 1,900 projected score and I only <laughs> ended up with... 2000 and that was with Grundy's 140 so 2011 dropped back to 10k uh ended up using you know two trades pretty much just on on wits panic really uh, and one trade on a marty who i might end up trading this week so uh <laughs> blown up my team a bit and uh my, my defense as well um which i, I tweeted out uh, a lot of people of wondering you know why I'm in the position I am with that defence, and I think that's actually a pretty reasonable uh, reaction to it. Um, had a high score of seventy. Actually, I think McKenna was a high score of eighty-six. Uh, Sicily seventy-six. Yeah. Uh, one premium in defence, but yeah, we, we've got a bit of cash in the bank from that Grundy to Wits trade to, to get Nick Dacos and potentially another uh, this week. How do you feel about? Um, yeah, I mean, coming into the Easter Monday game, I sort of thought I was in for another sort of just middling sort of round, like not great but not too bad but then um yeah as you sort of touched on there as well Sicily um had a really mm. tough game he was on 50 something at half time and then um the Hawthorne players basically didn't touch it after that so um yeah, despite the absolute you know bombardment of the ball coming inside 50 there it was every time it went in it seemed like it went to a Geelong player who marked it or uh, kicked a goal so um yeah so that knocked my score off and then Ken McKenzie as well had um, a pretty poor day which I know a lot of people had him but so sort of my projected score of, you know, sort of in the 2100s didn't look too bad. And then I finished up with 2068, which um, wasn't great. And my ranking went backwards, which is not ideal when you're already in the sort of mid 30,000 Ks uh, for rank. So, um, yeah, it's just I was a bit flat, to be honest, looking at my team because it, I don't think um, there's no obvious moves that like, you know, I've just I just have to get Nick Dacos or I've just got to get rid of, um, you know, there's I know some people have a uh, still have a Liam Jones or have a, James Warple or somebody that's like an easy trade out, but my team's full of guys who are like, you know, I mean, they're okay. Like, you know, Hopper is an example, like scored 75 yeah. on the weekend. Like he's not really scoring what I want, but I don't really want to get rid of him yet. He hasn't gone up much in money um, and his price is still, you know, 364K. He can still add a bit to that. So I'm sort of happy for him to sit there for a bit longer. But then when you get four, five, six, seven, eight guys like that, um, it starts to yeah really hurt your, your overall scoring. So, 
Um, for me, I think it's probably playing a bit of the long game still. Like I did a, you know, a, played around with some trades this morning and I thought, you know, in an ideal world, what would you do? And, you know, I traded out a rookie, um, you know, the classic one down, one up. And, you know, could I get, who would I actually really want? Like the guys I don't have, you know, that they're just killing it. Like Oliver obviously is the, the number one and maybe someone like a Jordan Dawson or Tim English. But I mean, that's another example where, you know, I had Sean Darcy in the ruck was fine. So it's not like I have to get rid of yeah. him. Um, so, but yeah, to do that one down, one up to get Oliver, I figured out I was only 170 grand short. Or something. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's no easy way uh, to rapidly improve my team right at the moment, but we'll go through. I mean, I think the defense is a big issue for a lot of people and probably yeah. um, a player that you, um, I considered trade. I didn't actually make any trades this week. And I did um, on Saturday morning, I was really close to trading Asava Radigalia to Samson Ryan, who was on the bubble. And I just thought, look, I don't mind having Samson on the bench there in the ruck. He provides some sort of cover. And I think Richmond likes him. And Asava just looked like, looked like he was absolutely treading water and going nowhere. And I thought, look, I could just make 50 grand on the trade. And then when it started raining at the MCG, I thought, oh, this isn't good for uh, Samson. We saw he got subbed out the week before when it was wet and he hardly scored anything. So I thought, oh, there's mm. probably not much point doing that. I'll just save the trade. Uh, and as you know, on the one hand, it worked out because Asava had his best game for the year. Um, scored 88, and he could have been even more if Hawthorne had actually got a bit more of the ball in their half in the second <laughs> had half. Had 50 in the third quarter. <laughs> yeah, they had literally had they won inside 50 for the um, third quarter and Asaba took an intercept mark. That was um, – so he couldn't have done much more. But So it was so – in a way, it was good to hang on to him. But then Samson is an interesting topic. We may get onto him a bit later. I think um, you sort of brought him in as part of all those panic moves. And it might work out yeah. all right given what's happening with Richmond's ruck situation. So um, – yeah, that's a move I could potentially make this week, but it's sort of not going to improve my scores hugely on the field. But yeah, you talked about defence. That's sort of the the main area of concern. And I think yours is sort of an extreme case where you've got five <laughs> sort of uh, rookies on there. And, you know, the rookies are, yeah. which I think it was the right move at the start of the year to, you know, load up in rookies in defence because that's where they were. But with Constable going out, Chester getting injured, um, yeah. and then we're getting, um, you know, some noises out of West Coast. You know, Ruben Jinby has just been so good. Only scored 40 on the weekend. And West Coast coach Adam Simpson saying, yeah, you know, we know we need to manage these guys, these kids, you know, we don't want them getting um, too burnt out early and these sort of things. So you start to get nervous about whether he could even potentially get a rest. So that's sort of suddenly become an issue. And then when you have primos like Sicily dropping a low score, even though he's been quite good, and um, Doherty, Sam Doherty is the, the real big um, glaring problem for a lot of people, including me. Who hung on? I uh, held on to him last week. I know a lot of people have traded him over mm. the last couple of weeks because he's yeah, been a bit underwhelming. Trade. Yeah, he scored uh, one hundred eight in round one, which is fine. Then 73, 87, 71. So it's becoming a real ongoing issue. And I mean, he had the thirty nine touches last week and only scored eighty seven. So I thought, you know, he's he can bounce back from that. But then he was wasn't great again. On Good Friday, so he's dropped to 525k. He's already lost nearly 80,000, and his break even's 143. So, I guess the first question to answer is: If you're a Sam Doherty owner, like, are we confident? Like, we know how good a player he is. We picked him at the start of the year for a reason. I think he scored about 150 in a practice match, um, and maybe Sam Walsh potentially coming back in might help him as well because his role doesn't seem to have been that great, sort of pushing up into the midfield the last couple of weeks. Is this an issue that you think you just got to get off Sam Doherty or could you potentially write it out? Depends how much cash you have in the bank. I mean, if you have 90K spare um, to go to a a guy like Dawson who has a a good record against the Blues, I think he's 130 and 120 in his last two matches, then I think that's uh, an option. But uh, Or or Dacos as well if you don't have him. But otherwise, I I don't think it it, it is a trade. I mean, the role is... If that's a real concern, I think, uh, for Doherty. But it's almost like now you just got to hope he comes good. He did have 39 touches just last week. It was just his efficiency that was down. But seems to be playing up at the the stoppage, almost at the the man up at the stoppage, which is hurting his, his intercept numbers. He's not taking the kick-ins as well. Adam uh, Saad has been taking them as, as well as you know, even Mitch McGovern and and, um, and Nick Newman as well. They've been. I don't think he's really taken a kick-in in the last couple of weeks. So... Well, we know he can still he can find the footy and, and he he should bounce back. I mean, even the second half he rallied and scored about 40, 50 points. But yeah, it's it's a I think unless you're going for Dawson or Dacos, it it, it maybe just be a hold. 
Yeah, I think. I mean, if you don't have Nick Dacos, which is sort of a shrinking That's number of teams who don't have him, yeah. Um, yeah, I think we just, yeah, I think we can pretty much be confident in saying now that's someone you have, you know, you really want to have in your team. So that's that's a tick, I think. Um, so he's up to five hundred ninety k now. Um, Dawson, you mentioned like just incredible on the weekend and just had like the ultimate super coach role where he was pushing up into the midfield, but also able to sort of drop back behind the ball and go back and take kick ins when he wanted to, and yeah, um, yeah all just. If he does that every week, you think like he's going to score 150 every week. But that, you know, before that week, his highest score for the year is 114. So I don't know that he's you know you'd want to blow up your team just to get him in. But yeah, if you said if he had the cash there, I certainly wouldn't object to that. I mean, what about Tom Stewart, the old classic uh, fallen primo? Grab him at the lowest price, which is probably going to be this for Stewart 572k mm. after 92 yesterday. Um, so he's got a low break even. He's going to go back up after obviously um, he dropped a bit given his injury in round one, but then he had a huge 160. I mean, I suppose, you know, my, my wonder is I probably could do that. I could probably could find enough cash to get from Docker to Stewart, but is that really improving my team overall or or is that just sort of going sideways? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, obviously Stewart was awesome the, the week before, um, you know, obliterating the Suns with that 167, but he sort of came back a down to earth a bit. I think if the, the scores have been reversed, a 90 against the Suns and a 160 against the Hawks, we'd all be jumping on him. It's it's weird how uh, how that does work. But, I mean, a break even of, of 67, I watched him pretty closely yesterday. Um, I mean, Duncan was playing off half back a little bit um, and his return had 31 touches. Um, I think that hurt his score a little bit. He wasn't taking as many kick-ins either, Stuart. Uh, I, I felt that a lot of cats were sort of, you know, uh, taking them as well, which means that he, he probably doesn't have the ceiling of a of a guy like or like Dacos con, as consistently obviously we saw his 170 last week but that was without uh without Duncan there so yeah it's it, it's an interesting one i mean i'm definitely considering Stuart this week i can potentially go Setterfield to to Stuart uh in in one move uh potentially after after getting JBR and um and day costs as well. So I could get a, go a double upgrade this week um, and really boost my team. But, um, and I'm just short of a guy like Marcus Bond and Pelly. But I guess it, it all sort of depends. If if Jimby's out, then I might be forced to sort of uh, pull the trigger uh, uh, on Stewart. I mean, you know, a Stewart at 570K is, is good buying. It's not like a, mm. an absolute steal, but, you know, you, you, you take it if it's there. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, there's no absolute rush though to to bring him in. He's still five seventy k and sixty nine break even. It's you know, it's it, he, he should pass that. But who knows how much footy is going to be uh, in the Eagles uh, attack this weekend? Yeah. But at the same day, time he could have a, an absolute field day. So uh, I reckon he, he's definitely a trade option. But I wouldn't yeah be selling the farm to to uh, to bring him in. Yeah, I think. Um... His record against the Eagles isn't amazing. And last year, mm. I think that was the round uh, I brought him in and paid up a fair bit, I think, to get him. And he was... Um, yeah, 95 and 106 last year. Yeah, and I think that 95, he was he only just got there. Like, he was on about 20 mm. at half time, I think. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's been very hard to predict. But, um, yeah, I just don't know that, you know, it wouldn't stun me if um, Dake or, or, you know, Doherty, you know, outscored him or matched him this week. So, you know, is it worth using two trades just to swap those goes over? A um, couple of other guys who people have traded in, or you could potentially look at. Luke Ryan obviously started the year really well. He's up to five seventy eight k though, so he's actually more expensive than Stewart. So of those, two, I'd probably take Stewart. Um, mm. Jake Lloyd, one that sort of snuck up on me, five hundred nineteen k. So you could do that in one move, and he scored um, over one hundred in every game. I think a ninety in one of them, but over one hundred in all the others, and one hundred twenty on the weekend. So I must admit, I haven't seen a heap of the Swans this year. So. I'm not sure if he's got his old rollback sort of pigging it around the. Uh, he was getting all the tagged, I think, at one point by McGuinness. So, I, and he ended up scoring all right because I think the Hawks gave up the tag. But yeah, it's almost like a bit of a, you know, uh, he's, he's come back to uh, the Lloyd of old. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, a left field option potentially when I know uh, one of Dan Begala's favorites. Um, and what did you think of Will Day yesterday? So, um, put up another ton. I guess the issue is um, he, he might be facing the MRO. Yeah, I, I think uh, John Ralph on the on Fox coverage was saying that uh, he, he expects him to get a week and he generally calls it pretty well, um, you know, with the MRO. So, yeah, it'll be an interesting one to watch. But, yeah, he was super impressive. I, I think he was, you know, underscored 
uh, if anything. And um, even when they were struggling in the third quarter, he was moved back in defence and, and took a kick in over over Sicily. Mm-hmm. So it, he's got a, a pretty favourable role there. I mean, he was one of the most damaging, almost clearly one of the most damaging midfielders in the first uh, in the first month. Um, Lace tackles as well. I mean, that was a, a little bit of a concern. How much contested footy does he get? But he, I think he had about three clearances in the first 15 minutes yesterday. So uh, I, I like him as an option. Can he be uh, a keeper? I think I think so at, at D6. I mean, obviously, you, you're paying up from uh, what he was at 400K last week. But uh, I think he's a decent option. Another one I'll, I'll throw out there, Al, um, as well. Adam Saad has, has been super mm-hmm. since the – even since – Midway through last year, um, he's just really thrived uh, in that role. Super consistent as well, 115, 113, 128, and 104. His four scores seems like at half time, he's always up at you know, 50, 60 points and um, doesn't need a stack of it to, to score well. 23 touches um, against uh, the Giants and scored 128 from that because he uses the ball really well and he, he seems to be mm. taking all the kick ins as well. Uh, the blue. So, I mean, if you've got 60k spare, I, I wouldn't be opposed to uh, Dr. Sada uh, in one trade as well. I think you get one point for a running bounce too. So, that's a nice that's way right. can, yeah. uh, boost his numbers. He, every time he gets a ball, he takes a bounce <laughs> before he does anything, pretty much. So, two um, step, every two steps, just about. Yeah. Exactly. And, and the other one, the other one, um, Tim, is uh, absolutely hot on Mason Redmond, the one oh, yeah. blip, um, a 49 uh, in round three, where he gave away a you know, a couple of 50s and uh, didn't have a heap of the footy, but besides that, 118, 110, 128, his three other scores. And he was another one who, who really, um, you know, went great guns in the, the back half of last year. And he he's another one who uh, seems to be splitting the kick-ins or even taking more of the kick-ins uh, than Jordan Ridley this year. Yeah, well, how much is um, Redmond now? So he's 503. I mean, yeah, yeah right. I probably wouldn't advise a, a Doherty downgrade because, mm. you know, who knows, by the end of the year, Doherty could end up averaging more than Redmond and it is a bit of a waste of a trade. But, yeah, if, if you're going to get on, um, you know, it might be the week. He still has the 49 in his, his average, though. Um, but, yeah, maybe uh, you watch him for another week and, and assess. Yeah, I mean, Will Day is the other one that I, you know, I don't hate the idea of, Rather than just going sideways, you know, sort of go down and at least make a bit of money to spend somewhere else. But now that he's mm. gone up, you're not getting as much. Um, you know, you'd only get sixty or seventy k from that move, and then you know, well, Will Day might not even play this week. So, um, yeah, yeah a few uh, issues down there in defence. But I mean, you sort of touched on there something else about you know potentially trading a set of field. So this is, um, and I mentioned this early too, that you know, seeing people you know wanting to try and make upgrades rather than going sideways and just keep correcting your team. I think we need to be starting to think about, you know, you want to be turning your rookies and mid-prices into more premiums, trying to get more premiums into your team rather than just swapping the premiums that you've already got. Um, but to do that, you need guys who have, you know, made some cash and, and you can trade up. Um, are any of these, I know people are, you know, and I'm looking at their scores thinking, you know, they're not uh, setting the world on fire by any stretch of the imagination, but is there anyone like, you know, would you be prepared to part with a set of field already or Jack Zebel or Jacob Popper, these sort of players. Warple is one who I've seen a few people trading out and mm. I probably consider that more mainly because I'm Definitely. just not sure he's, he's going to be scoring enough to make much money anyway. But these other guys are all still chugging away, making cash. Um, is it too early to be thinking about, you know, pulling the pin and, and trading them up? I mean, if you if you could turn them into an absolute top liner like a Jordan Dawson or a Clayton Oliver, I think you'd do it. But and apart from that, would you be hanging on to these guys for a bit longer or looking to move them on? Well, um, that's exactly what I was thinking of doing this week. I mean, I'm trading uh, Jacob Chopper. Um, he was looking pretty good at halftime. <laughs> had yeah, the f- 55 points, a goal, <clears throat> and a couple of uh, behinds as well. But yeah, just really faded out of that. But Setterfield, I mean, his time on ground numbers were, uh, were were a little bit of a cause for concern on the weekend. Seemed to be starting every quarter off. He still had his role with 72 percent uh, time on ground um, for him. You know, 21 touches, seven tackles and 87 points uh it's certainly not a, a bad score i mean but it, i guess it's just the way you look at it, it is said if you're going to be a keeper in the midfield uh you'd say no uh Zeebel, is he going to be a keeper in the forward line or in defense uh and and with that dpp uh coming in the next week um i i, I think he is so i mean he could have scored a a ton as well uh, if it had not been for a 50 meter penalty in a free kick against uh, in the space of about five minutes. So um, 
yeah, I think that uh, you'd definitely be looking at trading Z or Setterfield, sorry, in the next couple of weeks um, if you don't have uh, other options to get to guys like Oliver Dawson, Bont. I mean, I'm about 5K, 6K off going Setterfield mm. to, to Bont and Pelly, which, I mean, I would do in a heartbeat, um, I think, if I had the cash. But, you know, for a guy like LDU or Stewart, it may be worth just waiting a week, uh, getting a, a bit more cash or even – looking to sort of upgrade around uh, those guys, um, like a looking at maybe a Cam McKenzie next week, for example, or, or Ruben Jimby yeah, in a couple of weeks' time. So, yeah, it's it, it's a bit of a, a tough sort of position to be in at the moment um, because some of these rookies haven't made the, the maximum amount of cash, you know, to to be cold. And I think another issue as well, uh, Kansas Super Coaches are going to encounter, is the fact that there isn't too many rookies on the horizon either. We've got... Jacob Van Ruin this week, he looks like the top bubble boy. Samson Ryan, I mean, he may not make a heap of cash, but it looks like he's got a pretty good role there with Toby and Curvis out. Um, and Soldo, I think, suffering a, an injury uh, setback. But uh, beyond that, we had Dylan Williams, who scored 60 in a defensive role. Um, but he's, he's a forward only. Um, so a lot of these guys who you know, are ready to be traded, you know, Wilmot's, you know, McKenna's, uh, Ruben Jimby, um, they're in defense, but we don't have any uh, defenders to trade them to. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see how uh, Kansas City coaches navigate that. And I would certainly advise getting Jacob Van Ruin this week uh, for that reason. Yeah, well, that was going to be the next uh, topic on the rundown is to get into the rookie. So you've segued to that uh, beautifully. And, yeah, talking about Van Ruin, <laughs> um, yeah, 123K um, in the four line, 89 looked fantastic in his first game. 53 was a bit of a slow start, but, you know, that's quite a decent enough score for a forward yeah. rookie, especially if he's on your bench. Break even uh, minus 71 in his next few games. He plays Essendon, Richmond, North, Gold Coast, and Hawthorne. So you think there's um, probably a few goals there if he if he's uh, staying in the, the best 22 or 23 at the Demons. Um, the issue, as you say, is, yeah, who to trade out for him? Because um, coming into the weekend, I was pretty much, you know, I was ready to cut Asaba Radigalia, and then Fergus Green wasn't really doing much either. But they both had good games, and both now have negative break evens. So, um yeah, are you prepared to trade one of them or, you know, it's looking at some of the other rookies, you know, Oscar Baker, Alwyn Davey Jr., you know, they're scoring in the 40s, but again, negative break even. So there's more cash to make there. Ken McKenzie seems to be the one that maybe a few people are looking mm. at after yesterday, just scoring the 49. Doesn't seem to be getting the centre bounces anymore at Hawthorne. Break even of 13. So you think um, there's still more money to be made, but maybe you see the one you could potentially make a move on early. Potentially, but I mean, I think uh, Fancy Freco put up a tweet yesterday that his centre bounce numbers have really fluctuated um, from week to week. And I mean, obviously it didn't work for them, uh, you know, in uh, the third quarter in particular for the clearances. So it might be a case of that they, they give him more exposure next week and, and then he, he, he pumps out a, an 80 or a 90, which he's, he's done, uh, you know, a 93 in round one and an 89 in, in round three. So... Um, I, I would be tempted to hold uh, McKenzie another week. Davey might be the one, you know, because he's not going to hurt you the most. I mean, I, I traded Fergus Green, uh, you know, last week um, and that was looking really bad when he kicked a couple of goals early. Mm -hmm. But it seems to be with him that he kicks two or three goals early or gets you know, his hot early and then he doesn't touch it for the next half. But, he's, you know, he still ended up with 70 points and I'm kind of ruining that move even though I uh, end up getting Cade Chandler. But... Yeah, I think it's it's difficult. I mean, it depends how much you want to blow up your team as well. I mean, you look at uh, like a guy like Alan Davy, he may be the one that hurts you the least um, with a downgrade. Um, but if that means maybe moving a Rosie into your forward line, then, mm -hmm. into your midfield, then how does your how does your um your forward line look? You know, are you fielding three rookies on the field? Um, does it mean that a guy like Kate Chandler uh, or, or Jacob Van Ruins on your field? I think you've just got to assess like how it how it does work uh, for your team, but it may be you know a case of you know looking at who will hurt you the least, um, particularly in the short term with their cash gen, uh, and getting rid of them um, to to get to make way for for JVR. Yeah, and I think that probably is still Fergus Green, isn't it? Like he's gone up. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, had a decent little jump on the weekend up to 190K and a break even of minus 15. But most weeks he's only scoring sort of in the 40s. Um, so mm. it's still going to be a bit of a slow burn for him. You know, he, 
because of that decent score, he'll, he'll be okay for the next couple of rounds. But yeah, you're probably sacrificing, you know, he might get up to 250K or something, um, but that might take another month. So yeah, do you wait that to get another 50, 60 grand or do you just make the move mm. now and JVR could get that in a couple of weeks anyway? Um, because yeah, I think I'm in that exact situation that you talked about where I've got Owen Davy Jr., but he's on my midfield bench. So if I traded him out, I'd have to move a, a mid forward from a forward line like a Connor Rosie or a Taranto into my midfield. And that would mean pushing uh, a Cam McKenzie onto the bench, but then having to field an extra rookie in my forward line, which is, yeah. not, you know, I've already got Chandler and Sheasel on the field there, which is okay. But yeah, you probably don't want to have to have another one um, <clears throat> on the field. So um, yeah, and then potentially, you know, Sheasel or Zebel or someone might be going back into defense in a yeah. week or two anyway. So that'll create an opening in the forward line, uh, you know, potentially another one. So um, yeah, it does get a little bit complicated like that. And it's not not sort of that obvious um, who the best option is. And so the other one that you touched on, I suppose we should just mention a couple of the other rookies that I noticed uh, on the weekend. Um, you know, Tyler Brockman's on the bubble, but he got subbed out yesterday. Yeah. So, after, you know, he was quite good. Kicked a few goals um, in Hawthorne's win against North the week before, but then, um, yeah, subbed out of the game yesterday. So that doesn't, uh, not a good time for his long-term prospects. And he's a, only a forward. A lot of these guys are forwards anyway. So, JVR is clearly the um, the top candidate. Arthur Jones on the bubble. He scored 26 and 28 in his first two games. Pretty consistent. Of, uh, of, uh, 17. So, yeah, I don't think he's uh, going to do a whole lot for us. I mean, um, Matt Johnson at Frio is an interesting one. If he – just to keep an eye on, really, because he's yeah. under 23K. He's played two games. Has he been the sub both times? He scored 24. I think so, yeah. 15. But mm. um, the way Frio's going, they, you, you know, surely they might uh, give him a bit more of a go. But – um, yeah, no rush uh, to move on him. And one of your favourites, Bailey Humphrey, got his debut on the weekend. Only scored 39 for um, Gold Coast. He's a mid-forward, which is handy, but he's under an 84K. Yeah, under so. an 80K, yeah. Probably a little yeah. bit much with the the role um, that he's playing. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the one that could come into calculations for those who traded him out, Charlie Constable had 35 <laughs> touches uh, in, the, in the VFL oh, on the weekend. Um, I mean, surely they're going to have to make some changes, the Suns. Uh, the, the other one, a couple just to, to watch as well, uh, Brody McLaughlin, who was picked up in the supplementary period, uh, mature age of about 25-year-old uh, key forward, kick, he's kicked bags of, goal, bags of goals the last few weeks, and he's 102 k forward just to, to keep an eye on. Josh Fay as well uh, for the Giants, sort of a running halfback type, which they have about 15 of. Um, I'm not sure who he makes way for, but... He's had 43 touches and 37 on the weekend. And, and yeah, as we mentioned as well, Samson Ryan with the ruck forward um, could come into play as well if you need an option. But at the same, you know, with uh, Sava going so well, I, I, I yeah. was one who traded Sava out already. You know, it's like, do, do you want to trade him in? But, I mean, with with Ryan, he potentially has the um, the number one ruck role for, you know, three or four weeks depending when – when Ivan Soldo's back, so that could be a pretty lucrative role there, and and one to definitely you know, keep an eye on as well. Just on quickly on the Sheasel move, I mean, one option could be next week um, when you know Dylan Williams is you know, on the bubble for, for the power. He's you know twenty two year old or so, um, who they've sort of you know experimented with a little bit uh, in defence after previously being a forward. If he keeps his spot and goes well next week, he could go a guy like, you know, whether it's Liam Jones or Ruben Jimby or Wilmot or, or Cowan, trade them out, swing Sheasel into your defence and then uh, get a, a downgrade that way. That could be a way to, you know, make 100, 150K for a, a potential upgrade. So uh, that's one to uh, keep an eye out for as well. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, well, yeah, it gets complicated though because you have, um, yeah, a lot of us have been thinking, geez, that defence is looking pretty skinny. Won't it be great when we can move Sheasel or Zebel or something back there? But then they might um, leave the forward line looking pretty, yeah, <laughs> pretty exposed. empty at the other end. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the other one I should um, we should touch on is Will Phillips. So we were sort of yeah. um, sort of you know cautioned against bringing him in last week when he was on the bubble just because his role, he just weren't sure about his job security. But, you know, he was okay, scored 67, went up 58,000. Um, which, so if you got him, you know, that's a tick. Even if he doesn't do a whole lot from here, he's, he's going to make um, a decent amount of cash for you. So he's now 212K with a break even of minus 23. I mean, could you potentially mm. still bring him in in the midfield? I don't know. I mean, I, I watched that game pretty closely and the role looked pretty poor. 
um, for him. I mean, he was sort of starting on the bench, coming into the midfield for a little bit for some centre bounces, and then uh, you know spending a fair time forward. I think that the forward split was a, a bit of a little bit of a concern, and he kicked a, a goal, which sort of helped him up to about thirty points at half time. Still managed to use the ball pretty well, but um, you know didn't use. Uh, it didn't get a heap. Oh, well, he, he had 17 touches in the end. Actually, that's more than I more than I initially thought. But, yeah, I mean, how long does he stay in? George Wardlaw's knocking on the door as well. Uh, he's another rookie, I guess, to, to keep an eye out for. So, Clayton Oliver-type midfielder who's, who's, who's played a few games in the VFL now. I'm a bit concerned about Phillips' job security. And, I mean, even people who traded in, Kay Chandler last week, uh, he was looking pretty poor. Um at a stage, you look like he might not even, uh, you know, see out the game. Might get subbed out in the third quarter or something. But he ended up rallying for a fifty-nine. But yeah, it's and even me bringing in Joel Amati last week. You know, for bringing these guys who are 220 k, that the cash can dry up really quick with one poor score. So I'd probably advise against it uh, getting uh, Phillips um, because yeah, just the job security and and his role as well. Um, yeah, no, I think that's fair. Yeah, that, that Chandler one sort of a bit of a caution because I know a few people brought him in last week thinking you just don't want to miss out on this money train. Yeah. And all of a sudden I have to check his break even, but yeah, it's um, negative four, uh, so it's not too bad. But yeah, it, like it does dry up really quick. Obviously, it's not the same as a guy who's 120K um, yeah. rookie. Um, the other one, maybe to touch on, just that I um, only sort of just thought of, but uh, we're talking about the injury crisis at uh, Richmond. Um, Robbie Tarrant, I think, has had another setback. He'd come back through the VFL and played a couple of games, but now he's out again for um, sort of, I think it's indefinitely um, with his hip mm. issue. So Tyler Young yeah. would seem to have a pretty safe spot there. He actually scored um, okay on the weekend, 60-something. What did he get? 61. Yeah, 61. He's only gone up. He started at 102K, so he's 142 now, but he's got a negative 31 break even. So, I mean, it would could you bring him in as a, a if you need a defender? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you need one, yeah, I think he's, a, I mean, a decent short-term option, but, like, he's not going to make the 150K. He's sort of a, a dour um, lockdown defender. Um, got a bit lucky. I think, I think he took a kick in at one stage, which is a bit <laughs> bizarre, but I think they just wanted someone who could hoik it long. I mean, he's he's only just sort of come into footy in the last few years. Uh, mature ager, so, you know, a, a bigger body, but he's going to be, you know, playing lockdown roles, I think, especially with, with Robbie uh, Robbie Tarrant out, uh, who knows he might get some have to spend some time on on Buddy uh, on the weekend, which you know, and then and then they've got the D's and after that, so yeah, I mean, if you're desperate, I think he's a, I mean, you, you could certainly trade him in, but don't expect uh, him to be a big cash generator. He's a he's a classic warm body. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Wouldn't field him. Would not field him. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's the issue, and then what you're putting cow on or someone on the field, so yeah, he's yeah. probably not not the best. I mean, Samson Ryan was the other you sort of covered him off pretty well, but um, you know we've seen in the past guys like a, a Matt Flynn or a Mark Pittenay when they've got that number one ruck roll for a bit of a stretch, have really mm. made a heap of cash, um, and they've you know been must haves in KFC Supercoach in the past. Does Samson Ryan fit that category? I mean, he scores so far. 70, 72 was promising in his first game, but that was sort of a yeah. beautiful sunny day. Richmond had a good win against Adelaide. He kicked three goals. Then a 27 when he got subbed out, um, and then 44 playing the full game on the weekend. <laughs> and I think we both um, have fond memories of that uh, attempt in the last quarter where he tried to the kick the ball. Goal. <laughs> <laughs> Ran into about three tacklers and got caught holding the ball. It was in slow motion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I just don't know. I mean, he's... Probably going to be rucking with. I mean, maybe they bring in. Um, oh, I can't even remember his name. Who's, who's the other backup? Versatile, tall. Richmond's got. Oh, Ben Miller. Yeah. Ben Very Miller. Yeah, he'd probably come script. in and yeah. maybe those guys <laughs> share the ruck. Yeah. I mean, he, I thought I when think, he was yeah. rucking against him English, he wasn't wasn't terrible. But yeah, I just don't know that he's going to even in that you know playing as a virtually number one ruckman for five or six weeks. What's he going to score and how much money is he actually going to make? Exactly, yeah, and especially when you know spots are so tight, as we said, for for forward rookies. Um, I think it's only if you you know, or potentially brought in Jacob Van Ruin last week, for instance, that you, you might entertain him. But these are his scores in the back half of last year. He sort of really came on. Obviously, we saw him two years ago. Uh, looked like a 
you know, a bit of a giraffe up against um, the Saints uh, on his debut, thrown to the Wolves there. But in, in the second half of last year, his scores 124, 182, 70, 112, 92, 159, 124, and, and finished the VFL season with a 46 um, in the final round. But, I mean, he, he certainly has come on uh, in leaps and bounds uh, in, the, in the past year. And, um, it, I mean, I think Biggie Newham was rucking in the VFL on the weekend. Mm. He got injured as well yeah. so yeah, it's not going well for, the, for, our, for our tigers al um uh, well, might be a separate podcast um <laughs> but um yeah no, I mean, and Lynch yet as well so yeah. And Lynch, yeah but the thing was i think even last week at, uh at, at Danny harvick's press conference he said that you know they want to mold samson ryan as a as a forward of the future and he looked really good in that role in round one in, in dry conditions so it'll be interesting to see whether he actually is the number one ruck, I, I think he, he should be because, you know, but they, they may think, oh, we're robbing Peter to pay Paul playing Ryan in the ruck. Um, so it, it may be more of a, a split between him and Ben Miller. Um, but at the same time, it, it sort of depends how much, how long Soldo's out. And I think the way that Richmond put their injuries, it's more like a short to medium term and that sort of stuff, not explicit one or two week. Yeah. One to three week. I think you need to be absolutely sure that he's in for you know three four. I mean, I, I'm kind of lucky. I traded him in, so I mean, I don't have to to make the call. But I mean, I, I wouldn't be absolutely rushing to bring him in. And that's from a guy who loves trading in. You know, bang average rucks like Chris Burgess a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I suppose one thing to say in Samson's defence a little bit is the last two weeks the conditions have been absolutely terrible for. Oh, absolutely, yeah. All skinny guys. So hopefully if there's um, we get a bit better weather, although we're going sort of into the, the um, colder part of the year. But, yeah, if we get a few dry games, that would suit him a little bit more. But, um, uh, yeah, he's got a break even of 19 this week. So you probably can't afford to have another look at him and see how the Tigers are going to use him. And then maybe, mm. you know, Asaba, if you got someone yeah. like Matty Galea, exactly, get another week of cash out of him. Um, so you're probably not going to lose much on that transaction um, doing it this week or next week. So at least get a another look at how the Tigers might use Samson. And, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, that role has proved in the past to be a really lucrative one for KFC Supercoach. I saw someone on Twitter contemplating trading him in at R2 for Rowan Marshall, who's been a bit underwhelming and just freeing up, you know, 500 grand to, or 400 to go spend when and fix When Marshall's going to score think... 180 this week against, um, you know, <laughs> Billy Frampton and Dan McStay, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think I'd be doing that. Um, yeah, that's pretty extreme moves. Um, and I mean, the other move that I would could contemplate, and again, maybe I'll wait a week, is I've still got Nick Madden on the bench, who I haven't even really mm. used as a loophole because um, um, you know my cap, my, my VCs of choices have been pretty bad, so I haven't yeah. really needed a, a loophole for that. And then um, yeah, I've sort of just had him sitting on my forward bench doing nothing. So I mean, maybe um, if I didn't want to get rid of a server, I could potentially trade him out, but that would uh, require a little bit of cash. So um, talking about VCs and Cs, um, what are we thinking for gather round? I mean, does this make it harder not knowing, you know, a lot of teams are playing at sort of weird venues, you know, how does Richmond and Sydney at Adelaide Oval sort of affect um, how people are going to score? Is that something you'd be worrying about? Yeah, it is. I guess it's a little bit of an uh, interesting thing to watch. I mean, Lockie Neal's back in, he's playing in the Adelaide Hills, you know, who knows, <laughs> yeah. in front of a, front of a, a home crowd. You know, he's you know, obviously from SA, whether he does a bit better. I hope he does sort of pull his finger out this week after some sort of middling totals. But, yeah, it's I think Dawson definitely, if you got him on, on the on Thursday mm. night, it looks like a a, a really uh, good option there. I mean, I'm just sort of scrolling through the games, I'm probably going to end up captaining uh, Clayton Oliver. I mean, looking at his scores, 146, 105, 112 in his last three. Yeah. Uh, against the Bombers, um, I don't think you can sort of you know look past him. He's sort of a, a perma C, but I mean, Laird VC, he had a couple of good scores against the the Blues last year, um, 144, 123 um, in his two matches. So I think it's worth giving him a, a, another go uh, on the Thursday night. But then, I mean, <laughs> Dacos could go one or two ways as well. Ross Lyon could decide to, you know, go full lockdown on him. Um, which you know no team has really done this year, or Dacos could have fifty like Hayden Young did at you know at forty nine of those effective. So yeah, it, it's just whether you want to sort of take the, I guess a little bit of a risk in captaining Nick Dacos, but he's definitely uh, a good option, I reckon. Who who are you thinking? Of? Or even Rowan Marshall, who we said he could go 
you know, a, a big 180 um, against uh, Dan McStay. But the way he's going at the moment, I, I actually just saw a tweet as well come up from uh, Fantasy Frico, the stats boffin himself. No record in the AFL averages more points versus Essendon since 2018. So he averages 134 Against Sam Z's another one for me to consider, but I think I'll probably still uh, end up it, going uh, Grundy. Uh, Oliver. Yeah, Grundy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's one you'd factor in, and he's got um, uh, the Samson Ryan uh, <laughs> and Miller potentially combination in a couple of weeks, so that could work out. So I've lucked well. out of it there for sure. Uh, who, who are you thinking for VCs, though? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the first time I've really looked at it. I think, yeah, Marshall would have to be an option and definitely Dacos. I think, um, I mean, St Kilda obviously doing just about everything right at the moment, um, and their defence has been really good, but they haven't been locking down too hard on opposition players. And, you know, even I think, um, you know, Tuke Miller was pretty, got a pretty good score against them on the weekend. So um, I think, yeah, he's definitely an option. And we've seen the way that he that he plays. He just sort of finds a way to score. Um, yeah, I'll probably have to VC Rory Laird. I mean, he's been really um, disappointing, really, for just about every game this year. I think that one that he scored 140 was the only one I didn't try and captain or VC him. But um, uh-huh. probably have to give him another chance. And then... Um, yeah, looking through through the other games, I mean, it's sort of hard. I don't have that many primos that are really dominating at the moment. Looking at my team, I mean, Bont's probably the one. So maybe him against. The, I'd have to look up and see what his um his records like against Port Adelaide. But you think he'd probably um have a pretty decent uh, game there against the Power, and um, that'll be one of the the bigger games of the gather round. Yeah. But um, yeah, bit of bit of thinking to do to um to figure that out going to next week. Tom Green against the Hawks, maybe. See, I mean, what's Tom Green doing? He's just Getting plenty of the ball, but butchering it a yeah. bit. I mean, it's sort of the tail of my team. Just all these primos scoring 97 and 98. That's right. I mean, at least he wasn't 530. Yeah, at least he wasn't 700K or 680K well, yeah. like Lockie Neal and, and Lee. Well, yeah, 700 uh, and like, Yeah, um, exactly. I mean, he's the I least mean, the of... Midfield, um, is, yeah, I mean, there's maybe there's another topic for another pod at some stage, but um, all, yeah, apart from Clayton Oliver... Nearly all the uh, the midfield primos. Are, Tom Libertore is the mm. second highest average. Yeah, I was just calling it up. Scott, Scott Pendlebury number three. three. <laughs> wow. And then exactly. even like Tuke so, Miller, who hasn't who hasn't been like a absolute star in the first few rounds. He's fourth ranked, and he's another one to definitely keep an eye on. I think as a, as an upgrade target. Um, uh, he's at six twenty five k at the moment. You know, Lockie Neal, uh, my man, is, is looks like he's. Harley got our first gear. Mason Wood, I mean, he's a top 10 yeah. averager at the moment. So I Amazing. think you'd definitely be advised to jump on him. I think Tim Kelly's actually an interesting one. It looks like he's finally sort of living up to the, you know, to his his potential. He's had a couple of uh, uh, pretty big scores, had, you know, 36 and two goals on the weekend. So he's another one to watch if uh, he sort of keeps uh, going, obviously, in the, the Tim Kelly Cup this weekend against the, against the Cats. Yeah, well, I think that's something we haven't really talked about, but maybe it's more next week we'll really start getting into, um, you know, if we are starting to get enough cash to start looking at doing some, uh, culling some rookies and, and upgrading, who are the guys to target? And obviously we mm. all want Dawson and Oliver and Tim English because they're scoring out of this world. But, yeah, you want to try and pick off who's who's scoring above their price and who's a potential bargain. And, yeah, someone like a Kelly or, um, you know, Tuke Miller's not super cheap, but, you know, he's probably the sort of guy we want to be targeting, especially I think Miller's one I definitely – earlier in the year plan to get yeah. him before um, the Gold Coast buy because he'll be really handy to have sure. um, during those buy rounds. So that's uh, probably a good topic for next week. But thanks for jumping on this week. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Check out all the uh, the great KFC Supercoach content, the um, the Phantom uh, carrying the load uh, this week. I've got a few days off, so um, the trade guide's are already there and there'll be plenty more during the week. But thanks, Dan. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll catch you again soon.